My next guest was once considered a rising star in the Democratic Party. Jason Kander was a former intelligence officer while he was serving in Afghanistan. Once back at home, he was elected to Missouri State Legislature and then became Missouri's Secretary of State. In 2018, Kander was considering a run for the White House and met with then-President Obama, who called him a natural. But suddenly, he put on the brakes. First, he left the presidential field to run for mayor of Kansas City. Then he dropped out of that race, saying he was seeking help for PTSD from his time in Afghanistan. And today, his new memoir is out. It is a tell-all about his secretly dealing with this serious condition for 11 years, all while in the national spotlight. I am happy to welcome Jason Kander. He is the first millennial ever elected to Missouri State Office, and now he helps fight veteran suicide and homelessness at the Veterans Community Project. His new book, The Invisible Storm, a soldier's memoir of politics and PTSD. Jason, I am grateful that you wrote this. I'm grateful that you're here. You were at the top of your game when you revealed to the country, I need help. Why did you decide to, to do this in such a public way and then tell your story? Uh, well, I decided to do it in a public way because I felt like there was somebody out there who was like me, who was telling themselves, well, you know, what I did was no big deal. Because that's the thing is, at least in my case with the Army, the way that they get us to go in and, you know, do the scary jobs or, or the difficult jobs is to tell you over and over again what you're doing is no big deal. And I don't really fault the Army for that because to get me to keep going into rooms where I might be kidnapped and killed, I had to believe this is no big deal. The problem is, is nobody flips that switch off when you're done. And I think throughout our country right now, there are people who are telling themselves, look, it's no big deal. I saw it on the news. Look, it's no big deal. I was, I was a town over from that shooting. And we are dealing with this national trauma. And that made me feel like, you know, if I can tell people my journey as to how I confronted my trauma, got through it to a place of post-traumatic growth, then that would very possibly help a lot of people. Then are we as a country right now experiencing our own PTSD, the mass shootings, the political divide? I mean, all that we're experiencing, are we experiencing our own sort of trauma? I believe so. Look, I'm not a clinician. I'm just a guy who's been to like a lot of therapy in the last few years. <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, I think so. I mean, look, I guess I would gauge it this way. And it's hard for me to separate my own experience as a combat, vet a combat veteran that might lend to some hypervigilance. But I'm, I imagine you agree that I feel right now like if there's a parade next week in my town, I'm going to think twice about taking my kids to it. That's not natural. That's, that's the, the point of terrorism is what they're trying to do is to inflict that sort of trauma on all of us. And we have a tendency, just as the Army taught me to at a, at a lesser level maybe, tell ourselves, well, I haven't earned the right to refer to that as trauma. And so therefore, if it's costing me sleep, if it's making me, if it's disrupting me in some way, I'm not going to deal with that. And I don't want people to treat it that way. In the book, you write and you say, it's not that civilians don't want to hear about the experiences of war. It's more likely they're just not equipped to respond and, and, and they feel bad about that. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? Because most people, we don't have military experience. Yeah. How do we not just show our appreciation for the military, but how do we help you? Yeah. Well, I can tell you individuals and then I can tell you society as a whole, right? So individuals, uh, you know, it's about getting involved with veterans' causes in a way that is not uh, for brand association, right? I mean, it's not not just a matter of like, like you know how every commercial you see is a, a soldier coming home to their dog and then they're like, so buy this car, right? Yes. Like, that's fine. But like, if you're going to do that, some of those proceeds better go that direction. And you better be out there with your employees and you better be... In, in the case of my organization, building tiny houses for homeless veterans, right? See how I got that in there? But I'm st I can still do a little politics. There Stephanie. you go. Um, but on the other side, like as a, as a society, one of the things I write about in the book is that, you know, if you look at, at a lot of other cultures, when the warrior comes home, there's a bringing the warrior back in, right? So like a lot of Native American cultures would have a, a ceremony where they allowed the warrior to come in and tell their stories of what happened in battle so that everybody could hear it and the warrior didn't feel separate from the tribe within the tribe. And what we do is what? Like we say, okay, you're gonna get a free chicken pita roll up at Applebee's and then we'd like you to just be the same person you were before the war. And it doesn't really work that way. We have to, we have to work to listen to veterans hear about their stories on an individual level and at a larger level and not recoil from them. Because I can tell you, as a, as a veteran, you kind of learn which stories you can tell to people who weren't in the service and which ones you can't without them 
you know, kind of changing how they see you. And, and if we were just all more exposed to it, I think it wouldn't be that way. You just said kind of jokingly, see, I can still do a little politics. Oh, I, I fed you that. What about a lot? <laughs> yeah. What about a lot of yeah. politics? I because now <laughs> you have experienced so much. Yeah. Don't you think that right now you actually have more to offer than you did four or five years ago? I definitely do think I would have more to offer, uh, but that's just because I think I've grown. Like I'm a better father, I'm a better husband, I'm a I'm a pretty good little league coach, uh, and uh, and I love doing all that stuff. Um, well, the country needs help. Yeah. Um, so one of the big, well, let me just answer it this way. I would just say, first, people should read the book for a very full answer on this. Uh, and I'm plugging the book really hard, but I should also let people know that all of my royalties go to Veterans Community Project to fight veteran suicide and veteran homelessness, which allows me to plug this book like super hard. But to actually answer your question, um, because old politician me might not have, the difference between me now and me then is I had to constantly think about the future and plan the future because the present was pretty intolerable. I was having violent night terrors. I felt like myself and my family were in danger all the time. I had a lot of shame and self-loathing. And so thinking about what I might do next or chasing a sort of a redemption goal, you know, if I could save the country from this, that became a little bit of my self-medication, a lot of my self-medication. And the difference now is I'm enjoying the heck out of my life. And the present is pretty great for me. I'm playing baseball on like a amateur men's team, like baseball, not softball. I'm hurt all the time, but it's great. And I'm coaching Little League and I'm a huge part of my family's life. And I'm the, uh, largely the guy that I was before I deployed, but just with a lot more wisdom, which is to say, yeah, at some point, I think it's, it's very possible that I might run for something again. But I'm just having a lot of fun right now. And I guess I just feel like I've earned the right to do that. And I didn't used to feel that way. Well, I am grateful that you are the guy here with us tonight. Jason, thank you, thank you so friendship. very much. His book, Out Today, Invisible Storm, a soldier's memoir of politics and PTSD. Seriously, go out tomorrow and get it. It's worth a read.